Welcome to Whiskey's Journey. My name is Peter Fasciano. Today, I've got a pretty high proof bourbon five bottle flight that I'm gonna to put together with you guys today. If you guys are new here and you don't know exactly what I'm doing, I'm pretty much basically known as the whiskey guy in my group of friends. And I thought I would do this series that is going to showcase what I have in my collection. I'm going to come up with a series of whiskeys, pretty much the a common theme. Today is gonna to be high proof bourbons. I'm gonna take five bottles from my collection, I'm gonna put them together, and I'm going to either invite friends over or I'm gonna go over to their house and we're going to have a tasting. And at the very end of the taste, I'm gonna bring out or I'm gonna share with them a sixth special bottle just to say thank you and to cap off the night. Before I start, do me a favor, let me know in the comments down below which order you would actually serve my flight in. And then if you guys have high proof bourbons, 120 proof and more, let me know what your five bottles would be and then what your sixth bottle at the end of the night would be as well. Now, I don't think that I will be serving mine in the order that I'm gonna present them, but I do have them in proof order. So let's go ahead and get on to bottle number one. Bottle one is Knob Creek 9. This is a single barrel reserve. This is a 120 proof, $52.99 in Phoenix, Arizona. And I'm gonna check just to make sure, but this mash bill is 77% corn, 13% rye, and 10% malted barley. So when we're taking a look at a Knob Creek 9, this is Jim Beam. And Jim Beam comes across as having a nutty type of profile on the nose and on the palate. There's a couple of things that I've noticed with Jim Beam. They either have a dusty peanut or they have like a peanut butter flavor to them or a peanut butter note. This one kind of falls in between. I get a little bit of dust, but I also get that peanut butter note as well. And because it's peanut butter, it comes across as a little bit sweet, but there is also a spice in here as well. Pretty heavy on the brown sugar, pretty oaky. And I would say that the spice on the palate is a little bit more prevalent than it is on the nose. And just like the nose, you definitely get that dusty peanut butter, dusty peanut note. And the proof is pretty intense. And I gotta tell you, it took me a while to actually warm up to the Knob Creek profile. I was into these very sweet, fruity bourbons, scotches, and Irish whiskeys. And the first time that I had a Knob Creek, I was not a fan. But now that I'm actually getting into this and my palate has changed a little bit, I think I really do like this profile. Let's move on to bottle number two. Larceny Barrel Proof, this is 124.4 proof, $78.99, and this is batch B523. They come out three times a year, and the mash bill here is 68% corn, 20% wheat, 12% malted barley. And I think I might run out of room here. Let's go ahead and nudge these over here just a little bit. Now this is a weeded bourbon, so it kind of has a different note. Definitely not nutty, but I do get more of a cinnamon butter roll in here that's much different than the Knob Creek. And behind all of that buttery roll, there is a little bit of a, of a spiciness to this. I don't know if you guys have Black Angus in your areas, but they serve a roll, like an oat roll, and they have oats on the top and it comes with butter. That's exactly what this reminds me of. And to me, weeded bourbons have a very soft mouthfeel. This is a little bit slippery or silky, or a little bit viscous over the Knob Creek. You get a good amount of oak and it finishes with a very nice, soft sweetness. And the Larceny Barrel Proofs are a little bit hit and miss. Some of them are extremely hot. The A123, even though I did like it, thought that it drank extremely hot. This one is a little bit more subdued and I think the proof point that it's at doesn't drink as hot as the first release of the year. And if you guys are familiar with the barrel releases so far, what do you guys like more, the A123 or the B523? Let me know in the comments down below. Let's move on to bottle number three. Elijah Craig Barrel Proof A123. This is 125.6 proof. This is around $86. Mash bill 78% corn, 12% malted barley, and 10% rye. These are all very wide bottles. I'm gonna actually run out of room here. I have not picked up the, the B523 release. I haven't seen it, so I'm stuck with this one. And it's not a bad bottle to be stuck with. And the Elijah Craig has a very dark, rich note to it. I get chocolate, tobacco, spice, sweetness. It comes across as a heavier whiskey than the other two. And on the palate, I get some good dark cherry, leather, tobacco, chocolate. This is a pretty heavy whiskey, and I like it quite a bit. 
And so far, these are three completely different profiles. And again, let me know in the comments down below what you guys would be serving. And based on what I'm showing you today, what order would you serve the ones that I have? Because I'm not really too convinced that I would serve these in proof order. I would put more of the sweeter profiles towards the beginning and then move up to that nutty profile and then finish off with that special bottle. So let's go ahead and move on to bottle number four. Talking about a sweet profile, Old Forester Single Barrel Barrel Proof. This is the Master Distiller Select. This is coming in at about $70, 128.3 proof. And the mash bill on this one is coming in at 72% corn, 18% rye, and 10% malted barley. And when I talk about sweet, this is nothing but sweet. Bananas Foster, Banana Split, Vanilla Cream. I don't get a whole lot of spice in here, but I do get some good amounts of oak. Yeah, sweet cream, banana foster, banana split, a little bit of oak, more spice on the palate than there is on the nose, that's for sure. And much, much sweeter than any of these three. And this next bottle is one of the reasons why I don't think I would serve them in proof order because this next one is very similar to the Old Forester. And I know it's not basically considered a bourbon, even though it is a bourbon. It's a Tennessee whiskey. Bottle number five is going to be my Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof. This is $68.99. We got a mash bill of 80% corn, 12% malted barley, 8% rye. And where this is different from the Old Forester is I get a little bit more oak, leather and chocolate coming out of this. I still do have that banana note, but it's not as dominant like the Bananas Foster. This is more straight up like an overripe banana. This is more like a banana split. And the Jack Daniels just has a darker profile. The bottle that I have is coming in at 132.3 proof. Pretty high, drinks a little bit hot, but not too hot that it's gonna blow out the palate. So there you guys have it. Those are my five bottles. What order would you guys serve these in? And then if you guys have a collection that is 120 proof or higher, what would your five bottles be? And then let's go ahead and move on to the sixth special bottle. If you guys have been tuned into this channel, I don't think this is gonna be any surprise to you guys. And I think this is my highest proof bottle that I have in my collection. I got my George T. Stag Barrel Proof. This is coming in at 138.7 proof. I paid $159. I won this in a lottery from Total Wine & More. I belong to their point system. I think I'm a reserve member. And at the end of the year last year, I ended up having the opportunity to buy this and I got it for $159.57 minus tax. And it's the 2022 release. Buffalo Trace product, mash bill number one. We don't know the mash bill, but this is rumored to be 10% or less of rye. And anytime I smell a Buffalo Trace product, it has a grapey, jammy, one of those fruit popsicle notes to it. And if I remember on the palate, this is pretty hot. Yeah, this is a grape popsicle. It's pretty hot, 138.7 proof. It doesn't light my mouth up, but you definitely know that you're drinking a high proof bourbon here. It's sweet, it's oaky, it has a good amount of spice, and not one individual note that is in this is going to be dominant. I think it's gonna be a good special bottle to finish off the night, and that's gonna finish off my five bottle flight plus my sixth special bottle. If you guys are new here and you're not subscribed to the channel and you like this information and you feel like subscribing, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. If you like this video and if you like the stuff that I'm doing here, do me a favor and turn on that bell notification because I go live with videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And that's where I'm going to leave it today. So I hope you guys are going to enjoy your journey. I'm going to have a little bit of a journey ahead of me with these uh, pours that I have left. I'm going to enjoy these things off camera and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.